Welcome to the Black Sparrow Media Internet Broadcast Network. Listening to Linux in the Hamshack. LHS is a podcast about Linux, open source, and amateur radio for everyone. Now, here are your hosts Russ, K5GUX, Cheryl, W5MOO, and Bill, NE4RD. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. You have tuned into episode number 529 of the most terrific amateur radio podcast on the internet. This is Linux in the Ham Shack, and we're glad you joined us for this episode, which is going to be a weekender, where we dive into some random topic that the picker wheel is going to choose, and then we'll go straight headlong into hedonism. All of the uh, the song, the music, the wine, the whiskey, whatever it is that makes life worth living. So in order to get there, we need to start. So let's start. Cheryl, W5MOO is not here. I can almost guarantee she'll be on the next one. Almost. Some some weird thing could happen, but we're very close. Uh, but this hopefully will be the last one where she is not participating, but the two of us are here. I'm Russ, K5TUX. And I'm Bill, NE4RD. All right, so we start off our weekenders, as we have for quite some time now, with a random topic that we will be discussing or bantering about or drunkenly <laughs> expounding upon uh, or op-edding to uh, no one's delight. But whatever it is, we're down to, I did not add any of the new topics yet. I'm going to wait till our year is up and we go on break, and then I'm going to start adding a whole bunch of stuff back in. So we're down to... A mere six topics. So this is a choice of one in six. So here we go. Uh, And of course, it's the most boring one. Should I (laughs) respin? What is it? Well, we'll take a vote. (laughs) Uh, How how do you contribute to open source software? Uh, The podcast. Next. (laughs) <laughs> okay, good. So we'll, we'll skip that one. Um, probably pseudo random, so it won't probably pick it again. But oh, look, it did pick it again. So let's spin one more time. <laughs> Maybe it's closer to random than we think. See, we're already off the rails, and we're only three minutes in. Totally violating the rules. <laughs> okay, well, this, here's one we can probably knock out real quick. <laughs> I need. We'll actually get some uh, feedback, though. I thought we just have like the first fifteen minutes of just spinning the picker wheel. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, there's we could do that, but um, <laughs> this is the best amateur radio mode. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> them are fighting words. <laughs> yeah. So, so now we've gone from <laughs> being completely derailed to starting a holy war. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Steve, that is a good point. And usually when we have these discussions about what is the best of something, we always do define what best would be. So well, there's I, the right answer and then there's the like optional like this is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we want to play favorites though. I don't I don't want, think we want to go with favorite mode. We want to go with best mode. So we do have to define best. So well, I don't think you can define best. I think that's the whole thing, right? Because, like, the most effective way to communicate is using whatever it is that allows you to get 100% of your communication to the other person and back. <laughs> so, right, which could, could be almost which, anything. Yeah, which would be any mode that is needed to com- complete the communication. So, like, that's the right answer. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So let's, so let's do this the other way then let's, let's go completely away from best and go to favorite. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to define a favorite, you have to identify the reasons why it's your favorite. You can't just say it's your favorite. So no, no, no. Okay. (laughs) So what's your favorite mode, Bill? What is my favorite mode? Um, geez. I mean, I really, let's include band too. What's your favorite mode and what's your favorite band? Favorite mode, 
favorite band? Um, CW and 30 meters. There, I'm done. Uh, See you, bye. Together? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think so i I really like 30 meters because it uh there's no voice at all on it um it's a small band it uh has interesting propagation during the day and the night um and it's just it's interesting it's actually a pretty decent band to get some dx in uh if because the you know well serious dxers avoid the contests and stuff like that so you won't see them uh you know messing around on some of the you know 10, 15, 20, 40, you know, they, they, they hide it. They hide in the corners of those work bands, uh, you know, 12, 17, 30, now 50, what, 60, 60 meters too. Um, yep. Of course, I'm, yeah, I, I haven't even used 60. I should try doing 60 on this rig here to see if I can do it. See, I really like 60. I've done some work on 60 and I, I really like it, especially when you get into the sort of early, early to middle evening. 60 is good. There's not a lot of people on it. Yeah, so you're not going to make a whole bunch of contacts, but it's it's a good band. It's a good solid band. Yeah, I mean, you know, I like I like him. FT8 is fun, I guess, for a while until you automate it. Then it's just like it is what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess the CW is like you know, like the, the, my favorite. Um, it's also pretty useful because it's uh, yeah, you know, it it generally uh, gets through um in the weirdest of conditions. Um, I mean, technically, you know, JT modes get through too, but I don't know. It's just not as interesting. It's not as interesting. Yeah. The power limit is nice on 30 meters too. Like, but some people don't care about that stuff. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. Cause I you know, don't have a single rig that can go over that power limit. So, um, but in general I'm on, you know, five, 10 Watts. That's basically it. You know, I did cheat this time. I'd use the full, you know, hundred Watts out of this, uh, 7,100 needed a kind of burn up the finals wear wear them out you know it's like the uh uh the first drive on it um i don't know what 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 are, what are yours favorite favorite mode and band combination well i got i got to follow up a little bit did you did you identify why your favorite um mode was cw oh be, because well i mean you, you can't use well you can use digital modes uh on 30 meters but uh, your only other option is cw <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, CW. I mean, I really like Riddy too. I guess I'm a big fan of Riddy. Uh, but CW, CW, yeah, for quick contacts, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really hard to beat, uh, especially in a contest, in, not a contest, but like a DX environment. It's, it's just, uh, it's, it's rock solid. Uh, you don't have to worry about people generally getting your call wrong because you can correct that pretty quickly too. And uh, pronunciation and everything else kind of just, you know, there's not really any any issues with dialect and, and stuff like that. So it's it's a very clear and, and clean communication until you get some guys running, you know, 40, 50 words a minute. Right. Well, and then you're almost at ready. So. <laughs> yeah, you might as well be. God, geez, I don't know. You know, I was listening to some of these guys in this contest this weekend, and there's like... <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I I can't even I can't even think about it. It just sounds so weird when it's sent that fast. Um I mean I did copy the guy's call sign eventually, but I was like, oh, this is so bad. The um do you, do you actually do CW or do you allow electronics to do CW? Well, I mean in a contest I will I use a keyer, a wind keyer. Uh, but I do have like a, you know, I have paddles all over the place. I have a little paddle connected to my uh, new rig here. And then I have a uh, uh, pair of bencher, uh, bencher paddles over on the other rig. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I have no problem sending. All right. Cool. <clears throat> so um, my my favorite band is going to be kind of a cop out, I guess. But my favorite band has always been 15 meters. I knew that. I knew you were going to say 15 meters. <laughs> well, probably because I've said it before. Yes, you have. <laughs> um, but it's basically, it's the band I learned how to do everything in amateur radio on. And I still love it. And the now there's a sort of interesting little twist to 15 meters in the sense that when I first got into ham radio in the early to mid 90s and was doing all of my CW and sideband work, on 15 meters, most of my contacts were from here, where I live now. Mm. So 
now it's interesting to work 15 meters and to get on and talk to the people that I used to work <laughs> or where I used to live, because that actually happens quite a bit. I do get really good propagation into the Northeast. So, and I do a lot of work on 15 meters. When I'm doing my FT8, uh, it's almost always on 15 meters. Now I do wander up and down a little bit. I mean, I do the 10, 12, 17, so on and so forth. And when it gets late at night, of course, you know, switching down to 40 and 80 and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, if I'm on the bands in the daytime, you know, especially if I'm here at work in the shack or whatever, and yeah, it's almost always 15 meters. Um, I've, I've backed off a little on 15 meters lately because 10 meters has been so good, but you know, when 10 meters goes away, I will be back on 15. <laughs> so, um, and as far as, as far as mode, um, obviously I work FT8 the most, but I think I'm going to have to go with single side band for single side band phone for my favorite. I, I'd like to work that a lot more. I just usually can't inter interrupt my day. So I'm working more on FT8 and digital stuff, but uh, where where I find the most pleasure is is uh, phone work. So yeah, I guess I started my uh, my ham radioing on forty meters. So I mean, like forty meters has been a real fan favorite to me. I never really did much fifteen meters. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the propagation's a little bit limited on fifteen. You don't, but but it, um, gray line fifteen is really nice sometimes because I've worked all over the place. You know, eastern. Eastern Europe, Western Asia, Japan, you know, it just, it just depends on sort of the time of day and the propagation does wander around, but it's, it's usually in closer during, during the peak of the day. So you don't get a lot of really wild stuff, but it can, it can wander around, you know, so yeah. Steve says, uh, 15 has definitely been one of his favorites it's where I work the majority of my DX <laughs> choosing a favorite is hard. I've fallen in love with CW over the last few years. Yeah, I, I can't fall in love with CW. <laughs> <laughs> just, just can't do it. But, well, when uh, you make your CW sound like that, I can understand. Like, like it's like it's actually better when you it's real, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can I can send and receive CW. I just it's not my thing. So I don't I don't think it ever will be. Uh, yeah. Steve KJ Five T says Riddy is his favorite. favorite. Yeah. I have a very soft spot in my heart for Riddy. I just, I really like Riddy. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice. Now they're, of course, they're destroying all the Riddy contests with the uh, FT modes, <laughs> but that's, that's the old man in me. Arr, grumble, grumble. You know? <laughs> no, I kind of agree with you there. I mean, if, if you're going to do a Riddy contest, it should be a Riddy contest. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't be infiltrated by other stuff, especially since Riddy is definitely kind of a long form thing compared to the FTs. So. Yeah, well, yeah, it's more dynamic, too, because you can run splits on it and everything else. And I guess you can technically do that with the FT modes with the new, you know, de-expedition mode and stuff like that. But I think that gets into a whole different uh, a different realm because, uh, yeah, I mean, technically you could automate Riddy, but... Why would you? <laughs> There's too much uh too much auto frequency correction and everything else that has to occur when you're trying to, you know, attach to that signal. Even though you can do a signal browser on multiple ready signals, it's it's a little bit more complicated to do than the FT modes. The FT modes are just yeah, dead. Can I can I throw in a, a uh, honorary mention for the most interesting mode? Sure. Uh Hellschreiber. Oh failed health. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hellschreiber is really <laughs> that is that is kind of a cool mode. I have I have done uh, I've done a few contacts over the years on that, and you know the ticker tape mode for those of you that are not familiar with a uh, Hellschreiber or Feldhell or or I guess a, is there another name for it too? I think there's one. So it's ticker tape basically. So you actually get like a visual a visual contact. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite interesting. If you haven't tried it, get on FL Digi and uh, take a look at that mode. Yeah, get on the calling frequencies and see what there is to see. It's 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 peculiar. It's halfway between it's halfway between PSK thirty one and SSTV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much so. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> so uh, does anybody else want to weigh in here before we move on? Uh, I think we've exhausted our uh, our favorites for sure. And we heard from KJ5T, but there's a few people in the chat tonight. So somebody else can just, you don't have to give reasons if you don't want to. Just just tell us what you like to work, band and mode, while we uh, sit here and get ready to uh, 
move on into hedonism. I see Cheryl's put in some recipes, which is good. Um, I've got my my new whiskey I bought yesterday. Cool. I I wanted to take a picture of the shelves because I feel like I didn't do this deliberately, but I also feel like subconsciously I probably did. Um, When I bought new shelves to put the whiskey on, uh, you know, over the old ones, I bought (laughs) shelves that have a lot more room. Um, So... (laughs) <laughs> so now the shelves are looking like mighty, like there's actually like two and a half, almost three completely empty shelves. And I'm thinking, hmm, might have to address that. <laughs> so I thought, see, so yeah, we had three before and we went to two, but of course they're larger units, taller and wider and deeper. <laughs> I kind of thought they would even out, mm. but I was wrong. I had way, way more space. <laughs> and you know what that means? <laughs> more Very boots. Nice. Very yeah. nice. <laughs> I figured at least they'd be like more sturdier, right? They could hold more weight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're much, <laughs> much stronger. They're the standard, you know. They're the um, the wire racking shelves you see in like warehouses and stuff. Oh, nice. Like the the Home Depot ones where you have like uh, you can put a whole pallet on there, right? <laughs> well, there's not not quite that aggressive, but yeah. <laughs> be, be going to Costco and getting the true Costco delivery, right? You know, I yeah, just put the whole pallet in the back of the truck. I want yeah, right. all the all the I'll, I'll take a picture mine. and put it in the hedonism chat after this, so you can all see it. Because I got the lights wired up and everything, and the top shelf stuff is actually bottom lit, so you get the nice uh, you get the nice glow up through the whiskey. <laughs> Yeah, Don said he's never done Riddy, at least done it and did not know what the mode was. I actually did a Riddy for, uh, uh, I was a W1AW stroke seven for the Centennial uh, thing that they did. I did Riddy for all of all of that for, well, Montana. So if you worked Riddy on those, you probably worked me. <laughs> Because <laughs> not many people want to do Riddy. <laughs> and I was like, I'll be happy to burn all the finals on my rig. I just love it. <laughs> it's hard to do that anymore. Modern solid state rigs, you really have to try if you want to burn up your finals. Yeah. I mean, it'll 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 make them really hot, let me tell you, because uh, yeah, the fan will just be constantly running, trying to you know cool them down because it's, it's a little bit more than a, you know. 50% duty cycle. So you're, you're, you're slamming a bam, especially when you're running, you know, nonstop. Yep. Steve K seven HVT says he likes FT eight on 40 and, uh, some single side bin phone and FM on two meters. I don't know. I don't know if I love FM on two meters. I use it a fair amount, but you know, <laughs> cause that's, that's where a lot of the activity is. So yeah, <clears throat> I can't say I, I'm, I'm a, big user of two meter fm anymore but there was a time in my life that i used it quite often yeah now everybody's like oh we're good we're putting up a bunch of 900 stuff yeah you gotta get a new radio got we got like repeaters for 900 you know we're, <laughs> it's like everybody forgot about 900 and now suddenly everyone wants to use it so whatever all right well i think that's enough of that <laughs> yeah just keep your comments coming in we'll we'll add them as we yeah uh, yeah yeah we'll address them on. certainly we can always come back to this while we address our hedonism and I'm going to get back to the Etherpad here so I can see what we've got for Cheryl's recipes. Ooh, looks like sweet stuff tonight. So we're going to dive headlong into hedonism, as I said. And um, Cheryl has provided us with some recipes. And these are desserts. Well, a dessert and a dessert cocktail, I guess. So the recipe is for apple fritter cake. And she says, who doesn't love an apple fritter? That's, that's a good question. I do love an apple fritter. How about in cake form? Serve this with a holiday meal or just to have for snack time. Ingredients include, for the batter, three cups of flour, salt, sugar, baking powder, milk, eggs, vanilla, melted butter, and six small apples, cored, peeled, and diced. This sounds very baking type stuff. Uh, For the topping, you need softened butter, brown sugar, flour, and cinnamon. And for the glaze, you need powdered sugar, milk, and vanilla. So you mix all the ingredients for the batter, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to sit here and go all the way through it. The entire recipe, of course, will be in the show notes. So if you want to make an apple fritter cake, which actually sounds really good, um, you know, that's where you'll be able to find it. And if any of you guys actually do any of these recipes, uh, you should let us know. We'd like to know if you uh, enjoyed them, you thought they were good, thought they were terrible or whatever. Um, I know when we do them, we like to report on them. So if you guys if you guys ever do any of these, I, I know we've had a few folks um, report on them doing some of this stuff. And also, if you try any of the uh, cocktails, let us know what you think. I'd like to uh, like to hear how we're doing here. Cheryl put in for her cocktail the apple cider mule. 
And she's be, she's into the who doesn't love again. Who doesn't love the fall, fall holiday season? I don't know, probably lots of people who don't like the fall holiday season. But uh, whether I guess a, a, co- a good cocktail could make it all better, though. Uh, whether you're enjoying time with friends or a quiet night at home, this is a tasty cocktail. The ingredients are vodka, apple cider, lime juice, ginger beer. And you can garnish with a lime wedge, thyme sprig, or apple slice and sprinkle with some cinnamon. So this is a mule. So if you got a copper mug... You'd use one of those, otherwise glass, pour the vodka, apple cider, and lime juice in, add the ginger beer, and then garnish. And if you desired, put in a little cinnamon and serve immediately. Isn't isn't that what all cocktails are supposed to be done? Like, you make them and then you drink them. So, that's how I do it. So, thanks to Cheryl for that. And uh, do you have anything in your uh, corner? My like corner? Uh, you know, I'm just drinking a... Drink. Uh, I'm just drinking a mosaic IPA from uh, Kettle House Brewing here, and uh, it's okay. <laughs> I always, yeah, I get the multi pack of like uh, random beers from them, and and this is the one that I thought it would be the one I don't like the most, and that's probably true. <laughs> well, know thyself, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a good IPA. It's fine, you know, but it's just like meh. You know, there's so many better IPAs out there nowadays. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll just finish this one. They, they actually make a really good IPA called, it's called Shady. And, uh, yeah, that's a way, 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 way better IPA than this is. But, uh, yeah, you know, some people like this mosaic IPA stuff. It's a little bit more, I guess, on the bitter side. Uh, I really like their Snowblind. I think I mentioned the Snowblind before. That's the white stout that they make. And, yeah, that's unfortunately only a seasonal beer for them. But, man, that could be an all-year beer for me. I think I would uh, just just have those. <laughs> it looks like a lager when you pull it into a glass and, you know, it tastes just like a stout. It's a, it's a it's it's an amazing beer. Oh, interesting. Tastes like a stout, huh? Sounds like it's right up my alley. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it's just coming out of season right now, so it's like now I'm having a hard time finding it. It's like uh, I hope I hope they have a longer run next next next. Uh, I guess they start it in the late summer, early fall. So all right, very cool. Well, now I'll get back to my stuff here. The only reason I had you jump in first is because I don't really have a lot on mine um, because I don't really know anything about it. I literally found it yesterday, and it it's kind of it's interesting. Um, but I literally did not have any notes or anything to work from. So all of this stuff is straight out of my own taste buds and brain. Um, this description that I have here is uh, totally bogus. I could not find anything on that. <laughs> so what this is, and I don't know if this is the whole full name of this or whatever, but it comes from Starlight Distillery, which is apparently a product of Huber's Orchard and Winery, which is in Borden, Indiana. Um, they do all kinds of whiskey. They have some bourbons. They have some other stuff. They have rye. They have, uh, and then they have a lot of finished whiskeys, which is what this one is. It's a finished single barrel bourbon. Uh, the mash bill is unknown because I can't find any information about it. They do publish the proof, uh, 109.2, so nice on the higher end, definitely bottled well. It does say on the sticker that it's aged at least four years. And I think this might be a barrel pick from the uh, liquor store that I bought it from because when I went to look at their offerings on finished whiskeys on the website, this particular finish is not listed. So I don't know how they got it, but it's uh, interesting. So what this is is Starlight Distillery's Carl T. Huber Single Barrel Bourbon Whiskey Finished in Tokaji Barrels. Now, you, like me probably, don't know what Takaji is, and it's apparently a white wine that's created in Hungary. So this is a bourbon finished in those barrels. Don't know how long it was finished, um, and again, don't know the mash bill, although they do say it's a bourbon, so it must be at least 51% corn. With that in mind, I got some interesting notes off of it. It's, uh, It's pretty dark. It's a nice reddish caramel color. And that's interesting to me since it was apparently distilled and bottled in Indiana and it's only four years old. It seems like it could be caramel colored. It's pretty dark, but I don't know for sure. So I'm speculating. Uh, The nose on it is kind of interesting. It's got honey, vanilla, caramel, honey coated nuts, and a slight grainy note to it. I I attribute that that to its uh, relative youth. It's ute. Ute. It's ute. And uh, on the taste... Some stuff that I have not tasted in whiskey before, and that's probably because I've never had one that was finished in Takaji barrels before. But I get blackberry, 
toast, raw honey, grappa, melon, unripe strawberry, a little bit of heat, and a tiny saltiness or brininess on the end. I'm not sure what to attribute that to, unless it's just the barrel influence, but it's pretty interesting. And on the finish, it's a little hot. You get a sort of peppery heat to it, some soft grain notes. The honey proliferates all the way through, nose palate finish. Some hints of dark fruit and toasted sunflower seeds. So definitely some notes in here that I don't think I've attributed to any other whiskeys, which makes it interesting. It doesn't make it perfect or necessarily excellent, but it's pretty good. And I did not put a rating in here, so I'm going to have to do that now. So I think for what it is, showing it's a little bit of lack of age, um, but a really interesting finish. I think, I think however long they finished it for was an appropriate length of time, however long that was. Um, I will say I'm going to take off a point, I think, or so, because this barrel is expensive, and I don't know if anyone can even buy this anywhere other than, you know, single barrel picks from their local, you know, liquor stores or whatever. So I don't know what kind of availability it has. So I do have to knock off a few points here and there for, for relative things. Um, the price is $80 for a bottle. So I would consider that high for a four-year-old bourbon. Um, but it is interesting enough. And I think I'm going to put it at 86. I think 86 is fair uh, for price, taste, you know, a little lack of maturity, uh, but some interesting tasting notes. So that's what I'm going to give it. The Carl T. Huber single barrel bourbon whiskey finished in Tokaji barrels. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure no one is ever going to try this, but me, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but at least I have something interesting. So Tokaji barrel. That's interesting. And I have no idea if I'm pronouncing Tokaji right. It's probably not. That sounds vaguely Japanese and it's Hungarian. So it's probably something else entirely, but that's what I'm going with. Seems acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, we'll call it good. So I see you tossed an announcement in here. So uh, what is your announcement? Oh, Cheryl tossed an announcement. So you can read Cheryl's announcement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cheryl's announcement. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, let's see. Our last show. Oh, that's right. Yeah, our last show for 2023 will be on December 19th with our annual roundtable episode. We invite all of our listeners to join us in this roundtable, whether you participate live in the podcast or on, you're on Discord with us. So please come in and join us. We'll be here on the live show channel like we normally are. We'll just uh, we'll allow everybody to unmute themselves. And uh, those that want to talk can talk, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, make an episode and have some fun like we normally do. Why do I feel like that date is wrong? I'm pretty sure it's December 17th. Yeah, that's probably wrong. You know, Cheryl just making updates. Yeah, it's December 17th. 17th! She totally yep. nailed it. <laughs> Can't rely on Cheryl for anything. She <laughs> <laughs> 17th and right now doing. she's yelling at me from the other room i'm sure so <laughs> like we're not gonna be in town you're gonna push the episode anyways <laughs> uh, we actually are not going to be in town but we should be home in by recording time so oh okay okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going to see Trans-Siberian Orchestra on the 16th. So. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, you know, this thing, I don't like this 7100. Totally can sell it. <laughs> send it back. <laughs> see, see, that's the problem with leaving something in a box for a year is you can't send it back. I know, I know, I know. Well, you know, the nice part is it hasn't been exposed to uh, cigar smoke. So, you know, this is actually still sellable. <laughs> <laughs> like every other radio that's in my shack. <laughs> well, you should have thought of that like eight months ago when no one could get one. Then you would have been over retail on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'll keep it. I'll keep it. I just, it's, yeah, I don't know. Not having buyer's room after a year. <laughs> well, that's too bad because I really like the 7100. So I don't, you're probably comparing it to better rigs, though, that I've never tried. No, I don't. I mean, I'm like, I'm literally comparing it to my FT450D, which is definitely not a better rig. <laughs> It's just the, the silly things. Like if the, it doesn't know that, okay, I switched to USB mode. It should know that I don't want my narrow filter in place. You know, there's no way I had that when I ran that mode the last time. Stuff like that. Oh. It should know that stuff. It should memorize that. Oh, yeah. We're in different different mode. I don't. I shouldn't rely on the last filter setting that I actually had in place for CW. 
Well, yeah, that's fair enough. I, I I don't use mine in that way, or at least have not at this point. Doing a lot of um, SSB work and stuff like that, or or where I've actually changed, or or definitely not used it for CW. So I've not experienced that. But yeah, I mean, oh, I, uh, technically, I only got this for the all mode two meters and four forty. So really, I didn't buy it for an HF radio. So <laughs> right. Well, over the next uh, couple of episodes, I'm sure you can uh, tell us. You can give us all of your your gripes about the seventy one hundred. So. <laughs> <laughs> it'll come out i'm sure it'll just it'll just bleed out of me let this god dang thing <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> i'll just do right. ft8 with it i'll just you know put it back to out of its misery <laughs> oh i use it for everything so i'm enjoying it i'm gonna have to explore some of those things and see if i notice any little weirdness too uh but so far i've, I've enjoyed it yeah, I noticed like the the tight filter on CW does ring a little bit. I know it's all digital filter; it's not a real filter, so maybe that's why. But uh, at least at least I heard ringing. It's kind of a weird oscillation that occurs <laughs> inside the filter parameters itself. So it kind of yeah, it's weird. It's weird when you're doing CW and you hear that. Um, I don't hear that on a typical standard filter. And my I think my FD four fifty D doesn't have that problem on its narrow filter. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you're too damn picky. I you know, I I probably am. I probably <laughs> am. And I really want this the radio to, you know, to to work cuz obviously I bought it. <laughs> uh you know, it is nice. I like having the head, uh, you know, separate here cuz it's sitting on the desk and my actual radio is over there on the other desk where the antennas and stuff are, but um yeah. I don't know. I just the experience of using it for the CW contest, even though I only made 28 contacts, not like I used it a lot, but uh, I did spin around the band multiple times doing a little S&P. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll be hearing more about the IC7100 as time goes on. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll go ahead and let everybody get back to their day. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I do not have any social media roundup stuff done for this time. We'll, we'll catch everybody on the next one. We will not, we will not uh, forget anyone except for the fact that Facebook doesn't allow me to see everyone for whatever reason. But yeah. In the meantime, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks we for We do support. have our live chat people. We What's can that? mention those. We can mention our live chatters. Oh, yes. We should definitely mention our live chatters. So go ahead and read that list because I switched off of the Etherpad. Okay. Yeah. So we have uh, in our live chat this evening, we had Ali Kitten, uh, Tony K4XSS, uh, Steve KA. S7, sorry, KA7HVT. Let me just send it in CW. Uh, Ted, WA0EIR. Steve, KJ5T. Winston, KD2WLL. And John, K1BTZ. And I don't, didn't see anybody else join us, so I, I think that's that should be the list. Yep, very good. I didn't see anyone else pop in or out either, so... Sounds good. And so thanks again for everybody who joined in the live show. We really appreciate it. I hope you all have a good one. And thanks to everybody who listens to our podcast after the fact and everyone who supports the show in whatever way that you do that. We really appreciate it. Uh, we hope you are enjoying the holiday season as it uh, creeps up on us. And I think we're officially at the point where you can listen to holiday music and, and all that. And it's it's for real now. OK, you know, it's not it's not before October. <laughs> um but yeah, so we'll go ahead and let you get back to the whatever it is you're doing. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you in a week with the next one. It'll be a deep dive episode, and we hope you come back and tune in for that one. So for the hopefully on assignment for the last time, Cheryl W5MOO, I'll go ahead and wrap up episode number 524 of Linux in the Hamshack. I'm Russ, K5TUX. And I'm Bill, NE4RD73. Thank you for listening to this episode of Linux in the Hamshack. LHS is a community-sponsored podcast. Our website is located at lhspodcast.info. You can support the podcast by visiting the LHS Patreon page at patreon.com stroke LHS podcast or by using the contribute list on the homepage. We have a presence on Discord, Facebook, IRC, Twitter and YouTube. You can also drop us an email at info at lhspodcast.info or leave us a voicemail at 1-909-LHS-SHOW. That's 1-909-547-7469. Visit the online LHS merchandise store at shop.lhspodcast.info for fun and fashionable show-themed merchandise. 
Until next time, remember to always heed your hedonism.